Hello, hello. How's everybody doing out there? A peasant chat. That's right. We're coming at you on a primetime peasant chat, talking to the poor people on a Sunday. Guys, it was absolutely a gorgeous weekend here in Florida. Never really got much above 79, which is kind of cold. Can't be going to the beach and that shit, but it was great to do a bunch of videos and I got you guys Cadillac videos and the Patreon members. That's right. If you're a Patreon member, you already saw the video that's going to drop tomorrow, which is race gas testing on the 13 GT. I, I had some sneaking suspicions that the knock sensors interfering could be related to intake manifold design as opposed to just, you know, uh, octane. So I was able to prove that out. And if you're a Patreon member, you have access to that. The rest of everyone else is going to have to see it tomorrow at 5 p.m. Now, what we're going to talk about today is the supposed super snake. Typically, when people release information on new models or whatever, they usually do it beginning of the week so that it can get traction for the rest of the week, or they do it on Thursday. Okay, if they want to bury a story, they'll bury it on Thursday. People are kind of like checking out. It's almost late spring. People are just kind of getting outside. So by Thursday, people are checking out. They're ready to do weekend plans, so they bury a story. So you started seeing a little bit of um, rumblings of a supposed Shelby variant coming out. And I thought to myself, there's no GT500, there's no Cobra. Cobra and Shelby aren't really the same thing. There's never really, I mean, there has been a Shelby Cobra, but that was the, you know, small two, two-seater 60s car. But there hasn't been, an, after that, a Cobra with a Shelby, you know, you have the, they share the logo, but they don't share the name. So I thought, could this be a Super Snake? And sure enough, somebody sent a picture to my Patreon with a Super Snake logo on the Fender in a trailer confirming that it was supposedly a super snake and i thought to myself how can it be a super snake if there is no current snake it doesn't make any sense we'll talk about that but we can also talk about the um notchback got sold see ya kyle picked it up customer of lund racing it is gone thank you so much for picking it up i gave him the wheels i gave him his, uh, the extra headers i gave him everything i had for that vehicle hopefully he's a head gasket and a little bit of labor away from a nine second stick shift car we'll talk about that and many more things on this peasant chat but not before mr bill o'reilly says hi to the people out there okay. we'll do it live okay we'll, no. we'll do it live fuck it <laughs> do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Right. Fucking thing sucks! It does suck. p Mask looking for a new logo. Check him out. Nick James on Facebook. Said he's looking for a new logo. Trying to change things up. They gave him the d Mask Big cock logo. PG. Hit him up. Dean Hatforms. DeanHatforms.com. Get your Amory cups, tumblers, whatever you want to call them. From DeanHatforms.com. Hopefully he's working on a not one motherfucker shirt too. Then we can do a little bundle package to get you guys merch. Parts Farm, Parts Farm.com, Parts Farm Notch got sold. Parts Farm, Farm, Parts Farm Notch is now in the hands of a subscriber. So hopefully he can give us updates on that vehicle. Calumer Transmission, Calumer Transmission.com. Still waiting to hear back about the Corvette. I guess it was a slave cylinder issue, so they're going to try to figure that out. Got to get that sucker back. Days like today make me miss the Corvette. Two Auto Solutions. Hey, it is Bill, and he is alive. He's out there helping out people in Santa Domingo on Half Mile Events. Bellac, Bellac Industries out of Miami, Florida. Damian Barato with the best wheels on the planet. And MFP, MFP of Australia, MFP made for performance, which is Matt Coates. Owed $315,000. Still, to this day, is owed that money because, you know, he got hosed over on some bullshit and uh, people that shouldn't have gotten involved got involved. So that was a whole bunch of fun. Let's say hi to the people here and we'll get out to talking some shit for about an hour and a half. Leon Phelps, Joe Swiss, Clip Clop the Horse, Naldo, Monty Vavorty, Johnny Trans, Tiller, GTO, Leadfoot, TJ Sikorsky, Bob Matthew, Kyrie, Kelly, Kami, Commenter, Johnny Trans. We got, Douche did it. Oh, shit. This thing just flew by. Oh, my Lord. Douche did it. Johnny Trans again. Mike J. I'm hung so low. 2000 M. Shot. 1320 Mafia. Mike Super Snakes are daily, says Mike S. Robo-style Corn Fred Cow. 94 GT Verb. Phil Fest. Slow Sean. Rocco Z. Oli. Andy Ali. Valley 10 Street. Valley 10 Street. Puro Pinche 956. No, he's a, he's a different type of Mexican. Corey. <laughs> he's a West Coast Mexican. What would he call those? Cholos? Uh, Corey Seward. Muffler. 
uh, Brennan Bell, Corey Seward, EPA, EPA with the cookie, man. Um, Savant Martner, Mark Christensen, Mofler, Alfredo Diaz, Tim O, Alfredo Diaz again, John Bailey, S550, Josh, Kevin Skaneshi, Skaneshi. Nat Jew, Michael Locks, Dustin Garrison, Jared Chase Speaks, Bryson Witt, Revit Racing, Homie Caesar, Alfredo Diaz. Let's get all the way to the bottom. Alfredo Diaz again, Justin Michael, Mr. Prime, Johnny Boy, Alfredo Diaz again, Nestor Berrios, Brett Roan, Lifestyle, Mr. Prime, Jared Wells, Louis Lou, Liu, 337 Speed. He has a great voice. You know, that guy should just keep doing voiceover videos nonstop. Hi, how you guys doing? You got, he, this is what happens when you put an LS cam in a car and an LT in a car. And blah, 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 blah. He's really good at that shit. I, I don't. I don't have a face for radio, but my voice, my voice is not a good listening voice. It kind of pierces through the air. I'm fucking hot, so it's all good. Uh, <laughs> SVT Chapa, Honest Mike, Boom, Bye Bye, Kevin, Honda, Kevin, more pubes, more booze, Twitch, FPV, and Lee, Lee Jonathan, Le Jonathan Floor. I was going to say, are you a black man? Because Le Jonathan is a very, uh, <laughs> it's a very um, African-American name. Okay, so I never knew the history of the Super Snake. Christian Papa, who works at Power by the Hour, is a psycho Shelby guy. If there's a Shelby logo on it, he must have it. The dude tatted it on his shit. The dude literally ruined his skin for a fucking Shelby logo, right? Anyone that has a Shelby logo on their uh, body, uh, tattooed it on, tattooed on, uh, your uh, mental health should be questioned. But anyway, so he would tell me, I don't understand why S550 Super Snakes are a thing. Because there is no 2015 GT500. There's no 2016 GT500. There wasn't a GT500 up until 2020. So how can they call anything a snake? The GT350 was a GT350, so you can't make a Super 350. So what was so super about it? And then when you when you kind of got down to the brass tacks, it was a GT. It was a GT with a body kit, some side skirts, and a fucking Whipple. Like, big fucking deal. But people ate it up. There are people to this day that look at a, a Shelby F-150, Brian Luna, I'm looking at you, and think it's badass. And I go, guys, it's a body kit on an F-150. It's not like Carol Shelby sprinkled his jizz all over it and made it Shelby eyes. They took an F-150 that's about to go to, I don't know, Halliburton. And they said, whoa, whoa, whoa. These two go to Halliburton. That one goes to Shelby. Shelby puts their body kit emblems and a Whipple on it and charges you $40,000 more and calls it a Shelby F-150. Same thing happened to the GTs. So I decided to do a little bit of research and see where the hell it came from because I don't know the history of the Super Snake because I am a straight male. So I simply Googled history of the Super Snake and a really nice article from Motor Trend from back in April 18th, 2018, last year, right around this time. You know, they, they kind of spelled it out. Shelby Super Snake history, specs, and price. So... Let's talk about the beginning of a super snake. So, by um, in 1967, Michelin Corporation wanted to put um, to test their new tire, and I forget what it was called. Um, da, 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 Shelby, maybe so. Uh, yeah, Ferrari team, Shelby built the baddest car. Command the car's tires. Da, 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 da. Okay, it was a pointing numbers price. So, command eight thousand dollars. So, what was intended to be a run of fifty cars became significant. One of models. So, Michelin had some supposedly a tire that they wanted to showcase, and Carroll Shelby at the time in the sixties commissioned a, a GT. Uh, I'm sorry, a, a Shelby GT five hundred. And he hopped it up with a different motor. Let me see if I can find the actual specs on it. Here we go. The 1967 Super Snake began as a marketing ploy by Goodyear. Apologies, not Michelin, Goodyear. The tire manufacturer wanted to prove just how durable its new thunder... Wait, wait, wait. Thunderbolt radials were. And asked Carol Shelby to run wild with a car that could put them to the test. Happy to oblige, Shelby began with a regular GT500. Began with a regular GT500, key. 
and remove the original 355 horsepower 428 cubic inch v8 engine remember guys 355 horse not a big deal now but back then it was mind-blowing he replaced it with a aluminum 427 mark ii engine out of the le mans winning gt40 that made an incredible for the time 520 horsepower guys that's modern gt350 times the suit the uh, horsepower the Super Snake was originally slated for a limited run of 50 units, but after the bean counters decided the Super Snake would have to come at $8,000 more to make a profit, Ford decided to shut down the whole project, leaving it with one single 67 Super Snake in existence, which recently sold at auction for $2.2 million. So the initial Super Snake was so that Goodyear could highlight their Thunderbolt. And he stuffed the 428, uh, sorry, 427 Mark II from a Le Mans winning GT40 in it and you know whatever then nothing happened all the way into until 2007 after a 40-year hiatus ford and shelby hashed out their long-standing issues see so they had issues because he was out there doing omnis and all this other bullshit he was out there chewing gum he was out there doing whatever he could do well, time to take credit for vehicles i never had anything to do with where's my chewing gum and he was just trying anyway they they hashed out their issues and they brought the Super Snake, or the Shelby name, back to Ford. They collaborated once more to resurrect the GT500 in 2007. The standard car came with a neat and supercharger 5.4, 32-valve V8 that made 500 horsepower. The Super Snake package was available for an additional, basically 30000 bucks over the stock GT500's $40,000. With power coming from a larger Eaton blower that pushed the engine to 600 horsepower. But if your speed addiction was severe enough, for another four grand, you could upgrade to the Kenny Bell supercharger that liquid cooled shit and made 725 horsepower. When Ford upped the GT500's engine to a 5.8 liter in 2013, the 662 Corvette killer, Shelby decided to follow suit. The 14, 13, 4 GT500 Super Snake was nothing short of insane, offering a minimum of 850 horsepower. And with the Shelby 1000 package offered to 2010 to 14 Super Snake owners, they could have a car capable of up to 1200 horsepower. That is legit. 100% legit. When that went away, anything snake related went away. There is no snake. It's over. There's nothing else. Why would you call something a super snake it's over, when Charlie. there is no snake? It's over. Nothing is over. Nothing. You just don't turn it off. So let's fast forward to the gayness. 2015 is where the GT500 and super snake take divergent paths. The SS has, the Super Snake had always been based off of the GT500. But when Ford discontinued the King Snake in 2014, Shelby had to shift its own gears, aka try to make money on a fucking GT with a body kit. When it came to building Super Snakes, so for the first time in history, the Super Snake utilized a normal Mustang GT. A normal Mustang GT. Okay? as its foundation rather than the defunct GT500. So basically, every single Super Snake since 2015 is based off of a bitch-ass GT. The Coyote is not more powerful. There is no special head. There is no special cam. There is nothing special about it. They take that fucking car. There's not one motherfucking thing special about that car. Right, Mr. Pena? Now one motherfucker! So they took a GT, sent it to Shelby. They put a body kit on it, a fucking Whipple with a Whipple tune, and called it a Super Snake. No. It's a Super GT. That's what you guys have. A regular, run-of-the-mill, regular traffic, GT with a body kit, overpriced body kit that's put on like shit. With a regular bitch ass 3 -0 Whipple. So now what they're going to try to do is piss on your leg and call it rain. They're going to say, 2024 Super Snake. And it's a GT with a fucking Whipple. So you can expect it to run 10-5. With 800 horsepower, supposedly. And if your cats blow up, simple. Cut them off. Don't tell nobody. Octane booster, 13 to 14 PSI, and it might run nines. It's a GT, motherfuckers. 
it's a GT. So I didn't know the history because I didn't really care to dive into it. But now that this Super Snake came out, I started to think, wait a minute. Why isn't it based off of the GT500? Why didn't Shelby come out with Super Snakes in 2020, 2021, and 2022? Based off of the GT500. Then and only then would I have gone, okay, shove, I mean, the motor's stout. So, okay, even if you put a dumb, stupid 3.8 Whipple on that thing, call it the Shelby Super Snake. But if it at least has to be based on a GT500. Imagine you're a 2014 Shelby Super Snake or 1000 owner. And a guy comes to the car show with a 2017 Super Snake or a 2020 Super Snake. And they put it right next to your shit. You know how you guys are. You're gay. So all of you are going to go, wait a minute. Why is a GT next to my Super Snake Shelby 1000, whatever the fuck? This was based off of a GT500. This VIN number is not a Shelby VIN number. Uh, it's, it's a, it's a, actually, it is a Ford Mustang VIN number, really. But it is based off of a GT500. So I am blown away that they're going to try to sell you this thing as a Super Snake when there is no current snake crazy shit we talk about that whatever you want to do i did a review on the uh my, my cadillac escalate a one-year review just putting it out there for the people that give a fuck i'm not really looking to get a lot of views on that but it's doing okay it's, it's holding its own for what it is and a lot of people appreciated the review because i haven't really talked about the escalate that much it's my daily i really don't want to make it look like i'm you know showing you all the shit that i got but some people asked on on you know patreon and stuff hey you know what do you think about the escalate i'm kind of getting ready to buy a a tow pig and and the wife might want something nice and an escalate looks to be right up my alley now transmission troubles aside that you might have and dod issues that you might have the only reason i bought the escalate is because i was able to get it through a dealership for 40 something thousand dollars and a um or uh, extended warranty so that at least gives me a warm fuzzy feeling that if the, co- the lifters collapse and the transmission shits the bed that i'm covered for the deductible so maybe that's not the right vehicle for you if you don't want to deal with DOD stuff, converter stuff, and transmission stuff in the future. But for me, it's been an insanely stout vehicle. I love it very, very much. It's been awesome. I haven't really used it to its full potential. I just kind of just get go back and forth. I don't drive it that much. I probably go through a tank every month or maybe uh, three weeks. I don't really drive it all that much unless I drive it up to Lund Racing, I, to the gym, back, get food. It's a daily driver around town. As a matter of fact, I probably should get like an e-bike to do half of the shit that I got to do because I don't even need to start the Escalade to go to the gym, which is about two miles away. I'll probably end up getting an e-bike or something just to keep the miles on the cars down. And I can charge it for free in the garage. Now, tomorrow I'll be releasing a video on the uh, 2013 GT 6R80 car. It did improve in ET. That car is a converter away from 11s. Now think about that. Think about that very closely. How fast is your 24 GT 10R80 car? Think about that. 2024 10R80 GT or even a dark horse. They're probably low 12, high 11 second cars. Imagine if a Gen 1 with basically three or four mods is right there with you, a brand new dark horse. There is still no tuning, and I'm having a whole bunch of fun modifying this thing, ready to run up your ass with it because I can tune it. A old dinosaur of a Gen 1 holding its own at 70,000 miles against newer dark horses and 24 GTs. Imagine owning a GT and seeing this dinosaur pull up next to you, and you go, fuck, fuck, I can't tune this thing. It's stock. He's going to beat me unless you have a Whipple in it. And as long as I'm quicker than 10.5, I got you covered. So we'll talk about it. Do you think this Super Snake is anything super about it? Or is it a Super GT? We'll get your comments, questions, and concerns. And the Super Chats. Oh my God. 337 speed dropping a hundo. Says at the end of the day, the VIN and title says Mustang GT. Do me a favor. That's your next video. 337 speed. That's your next video. Dive into the Shelby stuff. Dive into the motor. Dive into what the VIN says. Dive into what it actually is. 
get into the nitty gritty of the 07 to 14 stuff because those were badass. Okay, the last badass stick shift anything Ford built was the 1314 GT500. Cobras obviously were superseded by the GT500. So the last Billy Badass 600 plus horsepower TVS tunable, upgradable was the 14 GT500. The GT, don't get me wrong, you can update it and do a bunch of stuff. But from the factory, this thing was pretty stout. I think you should do a video on that. I'm not trying to tell you what to do, but it would be pretty interesting in my opinion. Um, I share whatever says, man, I'm confused. 350 or Mach 1 handling pad. Oh, 350. 350. If you're confused about the GT350 or a Mach 1, it is not even a competition, guys. The G3, the GT350 donkey stomps and kicks the Mach 1's shit in, balls in, dick in. The 350 is a way more capable vehicle. Stock for stock tuned for tune blown for blow turbo for turbo the 350 is a way better vehicle and it's a shelby um i remember that video you did with the shelby 1000 gt500 and pbh heck bocephalus is technically a super snake because turvy laid his snake ring on the steering wheel he put his name on a four-cylinder Mopar. Eh? Damn, I'm I'm late. Howdy, guys. Uh, the wheels of the KR are sick. Jocko Bell says, shit. The 2020 GT500 KRs are going for $250,000. 2024 Super Dud, says Justin Michael. Super Serial. Did Shelby ever figure out a way to stop their body kits from cracking and falling off on the convertibles when you go watt for the first time? I don't know. 891, what could go wrong? Ronnie says, if you try to resell it or buy one, the bank is not going to lend you the money because they will think it's a regular GT. Ronnie, great point. Let's say you, I had no issue getting a loan for a 2009 ZR1 two years ago. I've owned it almost two years. Coming this June or July, it will be mine two years. So, Two years ago was 2022, nine, carry the one, 13 or 14 year old vehicle. I said, I want, I need $60,000. They gave me all of it. Like, I didn't have to put anything down. I had to pay the taxes off my pocket, but I didn't have to put anything down on that car because it said ZR1. The VIN number came back as a ZR1. Now, imagine if you, Go to a car show and you fall in love for whatever reason with an 18 to 20 super snake. Talk to the owner. He tells you it's a super snake. He tells you this is the documentation. Here it is. I bought it from Shelby. It is a super snack. Wow. I love it. How many miles on it? 15,000. I drive it. Oh, dude, no problem. How much do you want for it? Well, I bought it for 75K. But for you? I do 70. Dude, that's a deal. Okay, let me get with my credit union and I'll get back with you. Give me the VIN. Here's a deposit of a thousand bucks. Hold it for me. I'll work on the financing. Cool. Go back to your credit union, Space Coast or you know, PenFed or whoever. And you go, hey, I'd like to apply for a loan for this super snake. Sorry. That's a GT. No, 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 no. <laughs> Here's a picture. Uh, the VIN number says it's a GT. It's a, and it's a base. Wait, what? Yeah, it's a base GT. Look. They put their own brakes on it. They put their own wheels on it. They put their own body kit on it. They put the Whipple on it. They put the stickers on it. Base. Sir, you want a $70,000 loan for a base model GT? <laughs> but he said he's a stupid snake, man. This is bullshit, man. I got no dick. Well, that's right, sir. You have no dick. So, super snake owners, I really hope you like that car. It's going to be in your garage for a long time. 
I had two M fabrication headers on my last 2018 Mustang. I have heard all the bad stories, but my, my shift in about two weeks and fit was okay <laughs> after I dented it. <laughs> you know, you guys talk all this shit about fucking headers and 2M. They fit fine after I smashed it with a five pound sledgehammer. I remember the clip I sent you that Ford admitted to Jay Leno that the Mach 1 is just a parts bin car. Yep, I had an 87 goes like hell. Shelby Charger would kick the shit out of an 87 GT. My girl Amy says, what's up, bitch Oh, Amy wants some of this bitch Oh, Let her brother know. You can do that cuck shit, right? Race to 350 yesterday on the highway with the same mods. Headers 85 was really close. I was just barely pulling on him. 23 GT, A10. Those have a bit of an advantage. Headers and E85. The only thing a 350 has over a Mach 1 is a flat plane crank. Bro, shut up. It's got 520 horsepower or 512. The Mach 1 has 480. So you think just to crank... What about the cylinder heads, Cholo? Okay, Nuxo, Mr. Pro Charger, you about to get schooled. Your car has a regular Coyote in it. That's it. Regular Coyote. Coyote cams, Coyote heads, Coyote bottom end. Nothing crazy. 12 to 1 compression. The 350 has 350 fucking heads. Badass cams. Revs to 8200. Stock. That car is infinitely better to build. Put 10 pounds of boost on your Mach 1. Then put 10 pounds of boost on the 350. Who you got your money on? I got my money on the 350 all day, every day. Because that's about a 750 to 800 horsepower. Oh, by the way, twin booster pumps, ID 1000s, no fuel system needed. Cholo, que vas a hacer la hora, pendejo? Huh? Twin booster pumps, ID 1000s, Whipple, ESS, Vortec, 10 PSI on E85, 800 horsepower. 10 PSI on your Mach 1 is 710 to the wheel. And you need a fuel system to run E85. Cholo, get the fuck out of here or I'm, I'm going to fuck you up right now, motherfucker. Where are you? Hey, get the fuck out of here because I'm, I'm going to fuck you up right now, motherfucker. The only thing he's got on the Mach 1 is a flat plane crank. The 350R, coño, can I be frank? I need, to sh I need to meet you and shake your hand. You and I are like brothers from another mother. Do you know what I am saying? The 350R is the best Mustang ever made. Period. Amy Curtis wants some of this bitch. Nestor Bear says, Nuxo couldn't scam enough people with extended warranty at the finance office to afford the 350. She 526. So, imagine there's a guy out there that has a Mach 1 and says the only thing the 350 has on the Mach 1 is the flat plane crank and somehow it's up 40 horsepower on your shit. Get the fuck out of here. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna fuck you out right now. Motherfucker. Hey, get the fuck Bro, out of here. not even close. I'm, I'm gonna fuck you out right now, motherfucker. Nuxo got school. 526 versus 480. GT 350, please. If it's only the crank, then why does the Grey Goose run 350 heads? And Brett also run three. Every stage four. Every stage four FFRE motor has 350 heads, I think. All the poor is trying to justify why they can't afford a 350. Tony Vega, what's up, Tony Vega? He's the guy that does the TikTok videos. He goes to my gym. Um, hopefully, we can get that ESS car figured out. Um, has somebody tell me what the Roadrunner Predator and Voodoo weren't coyotes? Had somebody tell me, had Tiller GTO said, had somebody tell me that Roadrunner Predator and Voodoo weren't coyotes? Look, it's a family of, v uh, of engine. Let's say the small block Ford in 1960, a 302, somebody named it Cuck. And in 1985, that small block Ford was called Cunt. I can take the crank from the Cuck and put it in the Cunt. I can take, I can take the heads from the Cunt and put it in the Cuck. It's just a fucking name. It's a family of engine. 
I can take a 350 crank, theoretically, stuff it in a coyote. I can take a cross plane crank, theoretically, stuff it in a voodoo. I can take a predator motor, shove 350 heads on it, and it works. It just fits. It's a family of engine, and it is called the Coyote. And you know why? Because Ford calls it the Coyote. Just because it had a code name while it was being developed. Predator. I'll give you an example. Cobra was a Terminator. What's the difference in architecture between a 5-4, a 5-4 a, a from a um, uh, Navigator, or a 4-6 from a Terminator? Do the parts fit each other? Yes or no? Well, how can that be? They're named different. It's a family of engine. Stupid. Uh, Mike HS plus the handling is insane. I the wide front really helps. Alex, do you think you could use the gentle control back to control timing on a carb? No, Nate, we talked about that. I was down at Jake's shop and we talked at length about using a control pack to control a carbed engine. He goes, What about throttle? I go, fuck! You're right. It needs to see a math signal. It needs to see throttle input. It needs to see airflow. Cannot be done. The Voodoo engine is also hand assembled that goes through more quality checks than the Coyote does. Keep Toby away from steering wheel bolts. What did he do? I'm going to send you logs tomorrow. I think I sorted everything. Nice to see it. No DI to port injection only exactly. Are the 350s really as unreliable as people say? Brett, no. I think I think you, you got to understand that the 16 through 17, sorry, 16 through 18 350s, they had oil consumption issues. Guys, but I've seen so many live at 800 50 wheel with 11 pounds of boost D85 getting after it with a Whipple and, and a T56 or even a built uh, 3160 from Ben Calmer. Never seen an issue. When you road race them and you beat the ever living shit out of it all the time, yeah, there's going to be issues with any engine. How does a 350 do 526 horsepower with only one throttle body? <laughs> Terminator Coyote says, I know you don't like the Hennessy, but they did the roll race to the 350 versus a Dark Horse. Saw that already, and I talked about it. Dead Kite and Stroke, that's it. You know it, bro. Baby's gonna go to Hawaii. What's he talking about? I have a Gen 2 manual. Sewing if the G250... I'm sorry. If I can't I can't unfuck. I can't unfuck that sentence. I can't... I, I have a Gen 2 manual. Sewing if the 350 top... Part, I don't, I don't. <laughs> did, you, did you have a stroke? Take an Advil, take an aspirin. I think you had a stroke in the middle of typing that. Carmilla says, I had to put down $20,000 to get a finance on my 350R. New, best Mustang I've ever driven or owned, says Carl Miller. I've owned a bunch. Still kicking myself in the balls for selling my 71 Torino Cobra, Super Cobra J. Oof. Boy, that is a tough sell. In 1991. Matt Oliver, 4654, just born stroke is different. How else do you get more displacement? Boom, bye bye, says just like the 52 Gen 3 Coyote Black. Dude, the best Mustang was definitely the 80s 350. <laughs> that is funny. I think Nuxo just disappeared. Like, he got schooled on everything. He just disappeared. Went back to his uh, financing job. Hey, yo, okay. So, your credit score came back at 400. This is what I'm going to do for you. How much can you pay a month? Oh, I can afford like three fifty a month. <laughs> Fucking sold. Sign right here. It says one hundred and eighty months on the loan at twenty six percent. Hey, don't worry about that shit. You can afford the monthly payment and think about it this way: you can then just sell it when it gains in value. It's a two valve. It's okay. Don't worry about it, huh? Come on, we got your finance. Oh, oh. You see my Mustang? The Mach 1 with a Pro Charger. I saved the crank from getting blown up. <laughs> Fuck me. Uh, Chris Y says, I got my 350 supercharged and just after watching your Should You Boost Your 350 video a couple years ago, I was on the fence until I saw your video. Best money I've ever spent. Thank you. Nux was like, Nah, Bryson, wait. I was responding to one of y'all comment. Oof, could you imagine? He is the guy in charge of your car payments. Um, the great unfuckery deal. Did you see the UFC 300 last night? Fuck no. Y'all don't watch that shit. I have 
No, thank you. I, I have no interest in UFC. Like 0.00. Motherfucker said top part. Advil and aspirin help strokes. <laughs> well, it thins your blood so that it doesn't fuck you up long term. You still got to get to the hospital. Even fat. F- <laughs> oh, even fat Farah said the 350 is superior to the Mach 1. Uh, Amory edition Advil on DNA coming soon. Dropping a like. Going to listen to my work. This may be dumb question, says homie Caesar. What are your thoughts and experiences on the Ford 6.2? Is that a Coyote variant? It is not a Coyote variant. The 6.2 from the Raptor, because it's not a regular F-150. <laughs> Ain't no regular F-150, this a fucking Raptor. Yeah. As far as I know, it's a single overhead cam. Let me see, Raptor, Raptor, engine, SOHC. Um, the Raptor series by Inmar is based off of proven workhorse, the built for tough <laughs> 16 valve V8 single overhead cam super duty block. This is the same state of the art engine powering the F series super duty trucks that boast the best in class gas horsepower and tow ratings for the Raptor. Ain't no regular F150, this a fucking Raptor. Yeah. There you go. It is not in the Coyote family. This may, um, it may be stupid that Shelby Super Snake looks fire. Okay, Tristan. Bro, okay, then buy it, bro. Buy it. You, you're that guy that they love. It looks amazing. Does it look forty thousand dollars more amazing? Thank you, Carl. I appreciate you liking the uh, Cadillac Escalade video. Um, three fifty a week, exactly. How about the nine S Celine S three fifty one starting out as a base V six car? I'm okay with it. I'm not sitting there going, it's a Shelby. I'm not sitting there going, it's this and that. The car, the a, a pushrod 99. Remember, in 99, they did not make pushrod V8s for Mustangs. So they got a Ford Motorsport long block, stuffed it in there with like a Powerdyne or some kind of Vortec variant supercharger, Cobra upper and lower intake, Tremec T56, 355 gears, wood screws holding on the body kit. I don't care. I still want it. Um, uh, Nuxo can save his crank, but cannot save himself from valid opinion. <laughs> That's good. But my Navigator engine is the same as a Ford GT. Alex, I just got a Ford Level 2 fuel system for my 19 GT ESS car. I installed the ESS myself. How bad is the install on a Ford fuel system? Well, the hat. The, you got to run a power wire from the battery to the back. You got to wire up the FC3 controller. It is easy. The power wire goes to the FC3 controller. The trigger wire. Listen, everybody. When you go to your fuel pump drive module to look for the, I think it's purple and yellow trigger wire. Do not cut that trigger wire. Splice into it. Leave it connected to the harness. What happens if you cut the trigger wire for the f for the fuel pump drive module fpdm you will get a code like a po231 or fuel pump module circuit code that is a bitch to turn off you can turn it off but it's a bitch so please install your fuel system correctly so power wire to the fc3 fc2 controller trigger wire splice into it and the pumps have their own fucking plugs that go right into the fc2 or fc3 controller it's just a matter of how you lay it out where you put it and how neat of a job do you want to do but in terms of like difficulty level one through ten it's a six it's maybe a five it's not that difficult just refinance when the time is right bro trust me five four it's just a peasant gt500 engine just checking in from mississippi says austin moore what should be the first bolt-ons for a 2019 bullet full exhaust I mean, it's done. The 2019 bullet has a GT350 throttle body or a Mach 1 throttle body, a GT350 intake manifold. If you do headers, free flow and exhaust, and a course of blow my dicks or blow my ears off magna flow or whatever, honestly, you're kind of done. It depends on what you want to do. If you want to go get after it, after it, you can get a PMAS cold air intake, but I really like the stock one in the bullet which is a GT350 top end. Again, a bullet is just a Mach 1. A bullet is a Mach 1. Same fucking car. Okay? Just green or black. 
It has 350 cold air, 350 throttle body, 350 manifold. So if you already have exhaust, it's already bolted on, fully bolted on from the factory and your exhaust complemented it. Honestly, bolt on a blower and be a happy cat. The bank be like, um, that's a base V6. Sorry, you're not wrong. I would buy a cash. It'd have to be a cash purchase. The bank be like, oh, we got that. Um, the S281C started a lot of life off as a Cobra, even in 03, 04. Wasn't there a girl in fucking Florida who only showed the top of her face, right? And she was like super good looking. And then you see the rest and you were like, oh, uh, this oh. is, oh, where is it? Where? <laughs> she had her car stolen, right? It was like a Celine Cobra and she had it stolen. And that was that. It's like I would body throw the FPDM in the trash and yell at your tuner to fix it until they do. BJ. Wow, what a name. Crifasi. The four fuel pump controller has been a lifesaver for us. We use it on everything. No more ugly relays and sloppy wiring. If you buy a aftermarket fuel system and you don't have a really nice harness that plugs into a really nice controller. They sell you a hat, 50 yards of wire, and relays. Kindly ship it back and say, get the fuck out of here or I'm, I'm going to fuck you out hey, right now, get the fuck out motherfucker. Because I'm, I'm going to fuck you out right now, motherfucker. And you get yourself a Four Innovations Level 2 Minimum Fuel System with two 285 pumps, dash 8 lines, and a filter. Get all the shit. Um, bolt on an ESS, exactly. Borla is Borla is where it's fuck everything else. Gotcha. The bullet has a D4, only real difference. Got it. Um, you're right about that on the manual one. Uh, I don't watch golf either. But believe it or not, I went to the drive shack the other day. Apparently, your boy can smash the shit out them fucking balls. You know what I'm saying? Straight. 200-ish yards, 130 velo, exit, not bad. I mean, for whatever drivers they have there, I don't have a big Bertha or nothing like that smashing uh, the golf balls, but apparently I have a decent swing, and I didn't know this until I started fucking around a little bit, so I might I might take it up just, just for driving stuff because th that's all there is down here. There's no batting cages. Um, what are the mufflers you always call the adult series? Magnaflow Street Series. Magnaflow Street Series. Alex, since Celine got enough donation money to build the Celine Black Label, do you think it'll win a race car against a Whipple Dark Horse? I don't know. Uh, but, but Celine is not Celine like it used to be. That guy has been holding on by a thread for a very long time. It's just a name now. He used to actually race cars. He used to actually be legit. I don't know what happened. I don't know if it was mismanaged. I'd love to know, like, what the fuck happened, bro? You were, like, badass. Even if your kids were held on by wood screws. People bought them shits. To this day. 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 Celine Mustangs are highly desirable. Like ridiculously desirable. How much would an ESS G3X 100mm pulley gain from a 350 heads? Don't know. What a fucking weird... What? How would you do that comparison, Jonathan? How would you do that comparison? Tell me. Would you would you install 350 heads on a GT after testing it? What cams are you gonna use? Oh well, I thought you could just do, I thought you could just put them on. You think you could just bolt on 350 heads on your shit and reuse your cams and everything's gonna be hunky dory? No, dude. Okay, why does Whipple not give you a bap when you order an F-150 kit? Are the stock pumps that capable? I don't I don't think that they're I don't think that they care. <laughs> That's a, I don't think they give a shit here you go 55s 10 pounds of boost anything above and beyond that you're fucked I don't know I don't care honestly I don't care Alex um, sending some channel support your way hope you had a good week brother thank you Brennan Bell Brennan? Brennan sorry Brennan Bell it's baseball bitch my brother played ball and he's also good at a golf swing I think it is yeah doing that happy Gilmore skip Theo should I switch to a return style fuel system on my F100 I currently have a vapor work set up with a ZL1 fuel pump. Yeah. Get a return style fuel system. Uh, that, that shit's about to fucking catch on fire. I, I, it just sounds bad. Vapor? Vapor works with an X, not KS. So they misspelled it. 
And it's called Vapor. No, we're good. Alex is about to lose at the hips with the golf swing. Greetings, pheasants. Steve Celine. Oh, I shit my pants. <laughs> so, Celine, how old is Steve Celine now? 70? Steve Celine. Age. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. Homie is one foot in the fucking grave, dude. Takawel party. Takawel party. It's over, Jenny. Oh, man. It's over. Nothing is over. Nothing. You just don't turn it off. I don't see. I don't even think he's with the company anymore. He left in 2012. I think the board of directors fired his ass. A lot of that going around. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> so, <laughs> those that know, know. Um, so, yeah, I don't think he has an affiliation. I just think he's just like the figurehead. I don't think he's actually like, you know what we should do? We should put a Celine body kit on a Tesla. I had two Celines to Jackson Jeeper. One Fox and the last was an S351. There was just something cool about them. The Celine name used to carry weight and a different level of coolness. Now, no different than Shelby's. And it sucks. The S7 was my favorite car as a kid. I saw one at a car show. Loved it even more. The S7 torpedoed Celine. Did it really? Is that what kind of did him in? David Gonzalez says, I remember correctly, he opened his company to investors and they booted him. He started SMS, his initials, for a bit and then reacquired Celine after. The peasant chat is peasanting tonight. I felt Japan with the GT500 Jack Sand transmission until it's installed. Drop my GT500 trans out for a rebuild. Jack Sands, fuck that. Trans tunnel clearance. It sucks. Hi, Alex, says Ivan Osorio. I got an F-150 with a Whipple and I'm getting a code P -O P2098. Uh, yeah, Ivan, you you either have an issue with wiring or an issue with the um, inje uh, O2 itself. If it's fuel trim system bank too lean and you swap them and you keep getting the same code, that means there's a harness issue or an issue either with that bank in fueling or the wiring. 100% has to be vetted on your end. The tuner cannot fix that via a tune. You need to trace the fucking harness all the way the fuck back. Make sure there's nothing grounding or arcing or whatever the fuck it does where the a bare wire hits metal. Also, you have to make sure that it's fueling properly on that side. Whether your DI system's fucked up or your PI system or an injector is bad, 100% up to you. The tuner has nothing to do with fixing that code. This is all on you. Love ya. Some of you guys want us to tell you what to do. We are tuners, not remote mechanics. Celine will be the next weekend at Bernie's at Ford HQ. Whipple Supercharger VMP 93 Octane. Safely Boost 350 2020. Um, I shower. I, I, I share worry. I don't know what the fuck. Um, honestly, on that one, a, a, a Whipple. It, they just make the kit. It works. No need to get fancy with it. If you don't do Whipple, do Twin Turbo, Hellion, Sleeper, and be a happy cat. The 351 that burnt orange was a dream. Okay. Burnt orange 99 S351. Images. Oh. Oh, my Lord. Guys, I, I, there's just something about this car. I don't like these cars specifically. <sighs> this bitch is bad. This is more like a race red, but I don't know. It does have an orange tinge to it. Oh, 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 oh wait. This is a Whipple fucking gay shit. Okay. Fuck that. Um, S281. No. Wow, oh, these S351s, bro. I don't know. When I mentioned it on the... Um, Street Alpha Podcast, shout out to them. He was like, what? And I got a lot of messages from people like, dude, I didn't even know that was a thing. And again, guys, you understand that not, oh, come on, stop it. Just, just stop this. Stop this. Imprisonate me. All I see. Um, bro, I don't know, man. I, it's, just, it, it's just something about the S351 that I just, it, fuck, bro, it's just badass on it. Again, this is, this is, it's probably not a good car, probably rattles, it probably, you know, sounds exactly like a Cobra going down the road, rattling its ass off. But a T56, 
push rod 351 eight pounds of boost that that's that's boost e85 and cylinder heads away from serious serious stuff especially if you intercool it um make sure that you remove the gravy in the wiring and not patch it oof that's your best uh that thanks you're the best you got it ivan it's got to be vetted on your end it's 100 percent mechanical or wiring related what's the best setup for a 37 come on tk guns get out of here we don't do V6 shit here at all. I told you to check your harness in the last live stream, says Savar Martiner. What's your opinion? I'm putting a Ben Calmer Shades 3 MTD Tone of Vortex Supercharge GT350. Uh-uh. Daryl, 3160. The gear ratio is better. Ben Calarum makes a stage 3. 3160. Get that. Alex is a full mass uh, right now, exactly. There was an S351 listed on eBay a few weeks ago. Okay, fuck. Are we going to have to look for S351s for sale? S351 for sale. So, I got to see what they're worth nowadays. And I think, where would you look? Uh, bring a trailer? The problem with bring a trailer is a fucking auction site. And I hate auction sites. Um, I don't want to have to bid. You know, how much do you want? You know? Um, and the problem is a lot of you guys send me, a lot of you guys send me uh, Facebook posts. I'm not a member of these Celine and Shelby groups. They're gay. They're all gay. But... I want to see if there's like somewhere a uh, car gurus, car gurus. Let's go to car gurus and let's see used cars. Actually, Celine S351 car gurus. This is how Google works. There it is. Use. Oh, in Florida. What? Get out of here. Nope, none. Uh, let's just look at every. Uh, it doesn't say. No, not in not in Florida. Just anywhere. Let me see. 95 see i want a 99 and that's the problem i don't think i'll be able to find a 99 s351 if some of you guys can do some google searching on your end and email me ydbt for life at gmail.com links do not post the links on the chat the, the, the links will automatically be deleted um see if you could find a 99 s351 on uh car gurus or bring a trailer send me the links at ydbt for life at gmail.com we'll look at them live um daniel green my 96 and 17 Mustang VIN begins with one FA. My old OAG GT500 begins in one ZV. Same through 08 to 14. 2020 GT500 starts with one FA. In the Honda world, we decode the chassis through the VIN, EK, DC, EF, etc. EPA, I don't have access to Instagram here, man. Just, just email it. Email it, email it, ydbt for life at gmail.com. To go to Instagram here is a nightmare. It's a nightmare. ydbt for life at gmail.com. Last I checked, the S251s were in the $50,000 range. There's one in Canada for sale for $39,000. I don't want to have to do any importing. $50,000 plus for S351, says Craig Walls. What does that tell you? It tells you they're going to go up in value. Not a lot, but I don't think you'll lose money on them. The reason I bought my 13 GT500 is because it was $60,000 fully built. And I got about two good years out of it. Ran eights a bunch of times. Did three or four events. Okay. Then shit went downhill when the engine started developing issues. I had a, a valve train issue, and then I'm in the middle of of unfucking uh, the at last engine builder's debacle. And all he needed to do was replace everything in the valve train, and the car would have been honky dory. But what the fuck do I know? So now I'm in the middle of doing that. And once I get everything back together and run the eight second pass that I hope to run, it'll be gone. It's gotta go. It's gotta go. I can't. I can't. That car, unless it runs like an eight thirty. Then I'm like, all right, I'll stick with it for a little while. Um, the worst, oh, sorry, most of the chat's entrance to Celine was the cop car on Transformers. Uh, da, 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 da. Cody Troyner says, Alex, Gen 1 with a 2.3 on it, recommendation on spark plugs, NGK 6510, got the 26 to 28 thousands. They had one of those in Too Fast to Furious. Shit got wrecked for that highway scene trip. Um, don't post links unless you're a mod. They'll get deleted by YouTube. Exactly. Email me the link. Saw so Ruby Red 14 RS3 Illuminator for that price. I would never pay 50,000 bucks for a Gen 1 Illuminator Roush card. Sorry. Maybe mid to high 30s. No way it's worth 50,000 bucks. Not even close. All Things Boost says, is a 351 the standard two valve or is it a better mod? Oh my God. All things boost. Do you know what a 351 is? What do you mean a standard two valve? 
Do you do you think an S three fifty one is an overhead cam motor? The Celine S three fifty one is a push rod, push rod, three fifty one Windsor. With aluminum heads, I think turbo swirl SVO heads or some shit. Maybe, I think. I'm not 100%. And a Cobra upper and lower. It technically is a two valve because it's two valves per cylinder. But it is not a two valve in the modular overhead cam sense. SN95, I know nothing about them, dude. No, it's a 351 Windsor pushrod. Exactly what was in my notch. A 351 based, supercharged, 9 pounds of boost, power dying shit. It ran like 11.2. Listen, guys. It ran like 11.2 in an article with slicks. Cobras didn't touch that at all unless you had a lot of work. to Not a lot of work. Pulley and a couple other things. But it's solid rear axle, 351, all the torque, and a centrifugal. With a set of slicks, bone stock, it went 11.2. Off-road exhaust, E85, more boost, intercool it, maybe better heads than a cam. That's a 1050, 1040 car. All day. Imagine a 351 with the engine built like the notch. Exactly. 351 horsepower makes the car. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> He's like, hey, is it a two valve? I don't understand what 351 stands for. I'd rather pay $50,000 for this 17350. Okay, I'd rather pay $50,000 for this 17 GT350 at the dealership down the street for me. You can't go wrong with a 350. I also don't think you can go wrong with a 351. Dude's not even paying attention. Have you heard of a harmonic balancer's improving timing? No. I've heard of harmonic balancers improving the engine vibration. Like, the balance of the engine and the smoothness of it, but not the timing. Why would it... How would it hurt... How would it improve timing? Like, it... Make it make sense. How would it improve spark? Let me see if anyone has emailed me on Gmail any links to the Celine S351s. Because, guys, I love those cars. And I'm never going to be... I, I, I might be able to afford one, but it, it, it'd be... Oh, I love you guys. I got four. Guys, love you. Man, you guys are... Okay. I don't care what anyone says. This is the best chat there is. By far, there is no better chat. I ask you to do something, y'all just fucking do it. So shout out to Bryson Witt, BJ Crefasi, and Brandon Horton. Boom, boom, boom. Three. Three right off the rip. Let's take a look at the Celine S351s for sale. Number one, a 2000. <laughs> they didn't make them in 2000. What? <laughs> they didn't make them in 2000. They made them in 99. Okay, maybe I could be wrong, but it says rare one of one Celine S351 investment quality car. I don't know. That bitch is nice. Is that a real S351? Motherfucker, it says S351 in the back. Oh, come on. See, that's why I like the 99s. They have these lights. That's why I like the 99s. Bro. Bro, oh my God, I'm gonna come. Uh, oh, oh, it, it's got the shitty interior. I don't care. I don't give a fuck. Oh, brother. Oh my, oh, hey, holy shit. He got, <laughs> he got him out and made him sign the dash. She, oh, look at that. 14,895 miles. Oh, he upgraded it. It's intercooled, it seems. <gasps> Did he intercool it? Da -da -da -da, details out of da -da -da. the 99 S351, not to be confused with the common S281, is so rare. Don't people don't. Where is it? Where is it? Where, uh, here we go. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Out of the 20 hearts I produced in now, only four of them were 2,000 model year chassis. This is one of them. Although, to lead to the center of the 99, the cards, they both would be the option. Then they only two silver could produce. Of course, all the cards came at a price. In the case of the cards, they were 16,000. 
could you imagine going to a car show here and this fucking homo spot off about this bull? Bro, if this is intercooled, bro, bro. Oh, my Lord. Que lindo. Badass. Okay, let's see the next one. Shee! I love you guys. How much is this? $71,000. Let's see the engine bay. Is it the same as the other one? No, see how it's different, guys? Wait a minute. You see how it's different? This is what kind of led me to believe that this thing is intercooled. It's on the opposite side. They flipped the plenum, right? They flipped it, and it's on this side, which I wonder if they had the Vortec go through here, then through an intercooler, then to the throttle body, whereas this one is factory, right in the bitch. Blower right in the mitt. Oh, man, stop it. Give me that. Oh, get out of here. Oh, get the fuck. It's not even. Oh, my God. It wasn't even turned on, Carlito. I swear to God, I got a fucking diapers, man. I can't walk. I can't hump. You know? Look at me. Look at me. Go ahead and kill me, you cocksucker. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Guys. Badass. Badass shit. I'm in. Let's go. Let's go. Let's abort some babies. Huh? Fuck me. Let's go. Let's get the Celine. Look at it. 5.5 mil on the fucking... Let's bump that bitch, bro. Fuck it up. See? Ha! Okay, let's see the last one. Ah, motherfucker, say the same one. <laughs> Thank you so much. I just got off on a tangent. I just had to because not a lot of times do you even hear about people talking about them, but I do. Um, it says air to air in the description. Excellent. That car is a good buy for me. It is a 2000 S351 air to air intercooled for 66,000 bucks signed by the 75 year old crib keeper himself come on let's go hey mr salim i love your salim can you tell me what the motivation was behind building the salim i see my pants <laughs> You're just such an inspiration. You know, I'm going to tell my kids about you one day. Good for you. That's what fucking Jack Roush told me. Good for you. Why do we keep seeing different pictures of Bucephalus? Come on, Diddy didn't even, won't be that hard. Oh, you can see it in the grill. I almost crashed. It says air to air in the description. Sell the ZR1. Let's get <laughs> Dude, don't tempt me. Don't tempt me to make financial retarded decisions because I have equity in that three, uh, the ZR1. And if some psychopath goes, hey, man, I'll give you 60,000 bucks for that bitch. <laughs> Pal carajo. S251 over Viper all day. Boy, we know we're not paying 66 for that. The Celine body kits are sexy. At the car wash, I saw a grown ass man listening to that song while driving his car. It's a great song because it shows us how far we've come along in Martin Luther King's dream where we're now aborting babies and twerking in front of Planned Parenthood. I'm BDF, nigga, baby, daddy free. That me, I ain't got a nigga, baby, coming out of me. So I'm A-B-O-R-T-I-N-G on my way to the... Can you imagine if he was alive right now? Yeah, that's what I worked hard for? Yeah. <laughs> I shit my pain. <laughs> Fuck, bro, could you imagine if I get the ZR1 back from Ben Calmer, enjoy it for six months, and I sell it for an S351 Celine? Chevy guys are like, you stupid motherfucker. And I'm like, I don't give a fuck. It's all about the clout. Do you know what I'm saying? That was my favorite Mustang when I was a kid. I'll go with a Viper. Um, Poor boomers can't control their bowels anymore. I will buy the ZR1 tonight, says Joe Swish. I actually met him once. It seemed cool, but... I was staring at Molly instead. Does he have a good-looking wife? Steve, Celine, Celine, wife? <laughs> Mom, that's his wife? Bro, bro, 
Talk Beauty with Molly Celine. Oh! <laughs> let's, let's go! Oh! Oh! Huh! Oh! Come on, get over here. Oh, man. Oh. Because <laughs> I'm trifling. 40 grand my night skate. Roll up his back wood before he put that pipe in. Bitch, I'm busting jewels in the Hellcat. In the backseat. Get it for Steve Celine sends a letter, like a cease and desist. Is like, oh, this is a jump up, shit my pants. Hey, your wife's hot. Good for you, bro. I swear to God, if you buy a new age with a body kit for 66K as a new age owner, no car with this body style is worth that kind of money. <laughs> I swear to God, if you do that, it's going to be a problem. Uh, she better be 23 with all that money. Nah, I gotta rip the zero one first after the refresh, bro. You just brought, you just bought Bumble Premium for Molly. Chevy guys are just jealous of Ford being able to make a four valve dual overhead cam push rod three fifty one. Alex, can you get up and dance to these songs? Get the fuck out of here, <laughs> fucking weirdo. Go to images. She, let's go, Molly, Molly, Celine, let's go. Images. Let's see the rack. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Let's go, guys. Let's go. Come on. Let's get the mood going here. Oh, give me that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you want some of this? Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> oh, 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 my God. Que paso? Le pasaron la plancha. Imagine people that tune in for the first time and go, you know, Alex is really knowledgeable about Mustangs, and I want to hear something and learn about Mustangs, and I am literally fapping to a 60-year-old woman with big tits. Uh <laughs> Exactly, M dot R, big bumble clat. Exactly, where, where's where? <laughs> M dot R? Oh wait, I gotta go to YouTube <laughs> because <laughs> let me see M dot R because big bumble clat is a pussy. I mean, what the fuck? I, I don't even know how he, he <laughs> when he fuck pussy, pussy turn red because when I fuck pussy, pussy turn red. Oh my god, I gotta get my uh, internet connection um, <laughs> like upgraded. It's just slow, making me look like I'm not you know, in rhythm. <laughs> oh shit. Nobody learned anything today on this chat. We just wilded it, did it out for uh, a couple of hours. My Bluetooth just connected to my wife's Range Rover pulling into my garage. She just said, what in the fuck are you listening to? <laughs> We're listening to us fapping for a six-year-old chick with big tits. Good for her. Ah, smells like jelly beans. It does smell like jelly beans. Could you imagine you get down there and it actually smells like jelly beans? Ah, oh, this smells like jelly beans. Now, I don't know if you noticed, Alex, but it does say make an offer. What? what <laughs> I'm sweating. Sorry. What says make an offer? The Celine? Get the fuck out of here, bro. The only way I would buy that Celine is if I have like a shitload of money just like burning a hole in my pocket. And I got some, but not that much. This blood clot chat is killing me. Says boom, bye bye. Thought that was a leak. <laughs> Fuck you! Oh my god, Nardi Makano, you thought this was a lethal promo? 
You thought? <laughs> when me day a port more, don't go round the way. West Cumberland, no water for three west. We a cup in the morning, yeah, you know so that me blessed. Yeah, so much we got whipple kids in stock. Come me no give a fuck, me no give a rass fad. Bedroom bully, make the pussy talk. This motherfucker said he thought it was a lethal promo. Oh, fuck, I'm dead. Oh, I'll get a call tomorrow. Fuck you. Okay, I don't care anymore. <laughs> call. <laughs> Please, go go ahead and call, bro. I have a pick with Molly Celine from Fabulous 4 2013. Alex, speaking of 351 reason why no one uses the 351 Cleveland. So they had inherent issues with, I think, cooling. It's not that cool of a motor. It's cool because... In theory, if you built it, it was like Billy Badass and cylinder heads had a high flow potential, but not a lot of people really gravitated towards it. I have an eight-year-old next to me trying to learn for our Gentoo Stang. He's learning other stuff as well. Oh, Good no. for him. Good for him. Suck again. <laughs> Good for him because he's going to learn a lot here. He's going to talk about eating. Because I'm trifling. 40 block my nice day. Roll up his backwood before he put that pipe in. Dad, what's a backwood and what pipe is he rolling in? Uh, they're installing an exhaust system, honey. Maybe there's a dead dad in the truck. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> Nardi Nardi Mercado for mod. Well, you know what? I think uh, Mr. Mercado, you have. Uh, can I? I don't think I can make you a moderator. No, I, I don't have the option. I'm I'm sorry. I wish I had the option to make you a moderator because that was funny as shit. Is there is there any? Let me see if there's any way I can um do anything here. Let me see. Where are you, Nardi Mercado? No, it doesn't give me the option to do anything. Like, yeah, it just it just it just goes blank. So, apologies. I would have made you a moderator ASAP, but it'll have to be uh, another time when I'm not in the middle of the show trying to figure out this whole situation. Um, <clears throat> he's gonna know what meat bills, but sounds like yeah. I mean, if you imagine your kid, you're you're a psycho if you're watching your show, this show with a kid. Oh, bro, bro, bro. I, I can't imagine you're a responsible parent and you have to listen to the show. Psycho. That kid learned he survived the abortion. The cylinder head flowed like a motherfucker, but they were developed for the original Boss 302s. I, yeah, I know Backwoods is a blunt, but the kid doesn't know that. How much should one pay for a decent Gen 2 Mustang? With a dead dad in the trunk or without a dead dad in the trunk? I think the dead dad in the trunk is more money for no prep situations. But um, honestly, uh, in all seriousness, probably 25 to 28 for decent, you know, low miles. Don't sell the ZR1, bro. Come on. I'm not going to. I'm not going to sell the ZR1. That, I love that car. That car is going to get heads in a can before it's all said and done. It's already got a transmission. Can't say trans anymore. And a good clutch. I hope. Make some music video of him calling Lun from a phone in China. <laughs> um, okay. Well, yeah. Everyone in the chat needs to lowball out on that 351 guy. So when Alex sends a reasonable offer, it's not too bad in comparison. <laughs> Could you imagine that's what you tune in? Hey, you know, Alex is on and I'm going to listen to some Coyote content today. And it's just Diddy clapping Meek, Meek Mill's cheeks. What do you mean, Alex, kid, my loves the show? What do you mean, Alex, my kid? Oh, wow. Take an, <laughs> can you take an aspirin right now real quick? So not as good as watching my blurry channel 98. Dead dads bring up the value. Meek Mill sounds like a three-quarter race can. Oh, bro. Oh, my God. By the way, I don't know if you hip-hop... <laughs> I don't know if you hip-hop heads listen to Drake's diss on Kendrick and everybody else. I'm excited. I'm happy. I'm happy that some good lyrics, you know, is getting thrown out there. So we might get some more shit like that because when Dirk comes out, more people are going to start releasing clips and I'll have them on the show. Hey, Alex, what's a good cold air intake for a 19 Mustang GT? Kind of blue. PMAS, PMAS, PMAS. Always, always, always. Must be nice. Zero one only needs one cam. That's all offer of $5,000. What balancer do you recommend? ATI or Innovators West? ATI always. Not many Mustangs have Innovators West stuff at all. Sure, that city and not the VMP Whipple merge. <laughs> Could you 
imagine that's the VMP Whipple merge? Not actually Diddy? Oh, wow. you, want, oh, you want lids? Oh, what else? Oh, you want a bat? Oh, Are you going to get rid of your TVSs? Oh, Are you going to keep selling TVSs? Oh, shit. <laughs> Ah, okay. If that's an actual clip of the negotiations, uh, it would be wild. <laughs> so what tempo were the cheeks clapping? There goes playing Dustin on <laughs> Fuck. Look, the thing is, right, you guys come up with the content. I just expand on it. That's all I do. What is Diddy saying? Shh. <laughs> uh, you forgot the fart sounds. Yes. I don't want to. It just... The, the wet fart just sounds too disgusting in the middle of that. <laughs> it's so wet at the end. <laughs> oh, shit. My girl, my girl's like, why are you listening to that shit? Bro, dump her. Yeah, get to la boca. Get, to, get, get some, good cook something for the kid. Go cook something. Callate. The high pitched scream in the middle of that sound clip. <laughs> Fuck me. The Gold Soft Podcast is going to buy an S352 from Turvy now. Do you have a pair of gloves I can borrow? Alex says, Juice, man. I did it. OJ. You hear the diss? It was hilarious. He said, Metro, shut your ass up and make some drums. He told Kendrick, How are you going to high step? How are you gonna wait? How are you gonna high step with a size seven man's? How are you gonna snatch my chains when I'm too tall for you, bro? He said he split so much, he he split fit. He, split, he did so many splits, his pants ripped. Oh, bro, it's it's bad. It's bad. I love it. Ghost watcher for three years and decided to join in today. And Meek is all I hear. When it loaded, love you, deal. Um, <laughs> that or where's the gum well, at? Time to take credit for vehicles I never had anything to do with. Where's my chewing gum? I was probably Mr. Whipple and <laughs> stop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> for some reason, uh, uh, I'm, I'm just gonna ignore it. Yo, let's top topic. Well, what was the update on the teeth you mentioned a month or two ago? Okay, so about uh. A year ago, oh yeah, when I was installing the transmission on the GT500, this tooth, I, I, this, this, I, uh, um, started to, okay, I dropped the wrench on my tooth, bam, like right, but my mouth was closed, and I dropped like a three-quarter inch wrench, and it was like, boom, and I swear to God, I thought I, I, I chipped it, it was like, oh, like, I saw stars and everything. And I run home, and I look, and everything looks good. And I, I wiggled it to make sure it's not loose, and I was like, oh, that hurt like a motherfucker. Fast forward about three months, and I see a little red dot in the center of this tooth right here. Just a little red dot in the middle. I'm like, what the fuck's that? So I keep looking at it, keep monitoring it, and I'm like, all right, let me make an appointment with the dentist. The appointment was a couple, like, a, like four weeks out, and then one day I decided to push on the dot, and it went, and I'm like, oh. What the fuck? So the pulp, there's like a pulp layer <clears throat> where the teeth, basically the gum made its way into the tooth. It decayed and the pulp layer was gone and it went into the body of the tooth. And then I go in there and I thought they were just going to, you know, spackle it up and we're good. No, these motherfuckers go and tell me they got to remove it. I go, excuse me? He goes, we got to remove that motherfucker. And I'm like, are you kidding me? He goes, what happened? I go, I dropped a wrench on it. They go, no. This is very old. This is like trauma from like 20 years ago. I go, are you serious? He goes, yeah, this is like a long decay trauma. I think the dr wrench dropping on it just accelerated whatever was going to happen, but it happened sooner than later. And I'm like, well, what needs to happen? They go, we got to take the tooth out. I go, no, 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 no. <clears throat> so long story short, tooth was out and I had a temporary in there uh, with a spacer and that's why it looked like, you know, I, I talk retarded like they had to put an implant in the jaw. They had to uh, size it. I had to go in for three revisions because I did not like what it looked like because one of the better things I have is my smile. I am not a great looking guy. Actually, I'm really good looking. Uh, I don't have good hair. Uh, I don't have particularly great eyes, but my smile, 
is pretty fucking great. So I paid the, <clears throat> I wanted it to be perfect. So after about three revisions, got this guy in there. So this guy, I'm going to be long dead. This motherfucker is going to be in this titanium ass, Billy Badass shit. They matched it perfectly. They did a great job. Paid big money for it. So that's why I was just kind of struggling to talk because I had a basically a retainer with a fucking fake tooth in it for over seven months. And um, I was somehow able to keep it in there without it flying off and embarrassing myself. But yeah, it was. Um, and you got to think about it. You got to think about it. What it does to your psyche. You've had your teeth in your whole fucking life, right? And then all of a sudden, you have to take this retainer off and you look like buckwheat in the mirror and you're you're just like, I'm not feeling that great about myself. The moment it went in and it was permanent and I was able to eat and talk like a normal person, I was like, thank fucking God. And nobody saw it. No one saw the tooth fly off or anything like that. There are no photos of me with, with that tooth missing. So I was able to uh, get that sucker done. It was not cheap. It was not cheap. It was big money. <clears throat> Uh, guessing the dentist didn't have a good base file for Alex. Call the tooth on three because you had to put it on three times. Damn, Alex got JLT teeth. Damn, you got to pull out. <laughs> uh, why does Meek Mill sound like a coyote guy that claims he has choppy cams? Hi, Alex, on the LRX and data logs. Update for a review, track, run, data. Thanks. Hey, Alex, on the LRX and data logs. Update for review, the track. Run. Oh, Carlos Arroyo. Good job. <clears throat> Coming soon. You'll be able to update your LRX and you will be able to download your own logs. I know we've been working on it. Luckily, Junior and the programmer, thank you so much for being so helpful. Again, guys, the more we sell, the more options we can give you. So now you have the ability to download your own logs and see them at the track. Boom, download, see if there's an issue. Because some of you read your own logs. Some of you are good at it. You and the racers need to read their own logs. So on the newest LRX update coming up, we'll announce when you'll be able to download your own logs. <clears throat> on three tooth for real. On three tooth. I left my ass off what? That mouth about to be at full bolt on. Alex, in your one year review of the Escalade, you said Ford buyers should consider GM. Why would anyone choose Explore over an Expedition with a V6? Over GM lineup with solid V8 options. Brand loyalty? I drive EcoBoost 10 speeds and they're fucking trash. GM has a better version of the 10 speed than Ford does. The torque delivery and predictability of the V8 with a 10 speed or even the 8 speed is light years ahead of Ford. Brand loyalty is the only reason you should buy an EcoBoost truck. If, you, if you're if you considering an SUV, full size, don't get a fucking Expedition. You get yourself a Tahoe, a Yukon, or if you can swing it an Escalade. Way above, I mean, not even close. Jake has a 10R80 Explorer. Hates it. Transmission issues. I don't want nothing to do with that fucking Ford shit. If you want to stay brand loyal, cool. Chevrolet makes a way better full-sized SUV than Ford, period. <clears throat> yeah, I ain't going to get in on that, Mike H. Obviously, uh, I'm America first. I wish we weren't involved in anything, but I'm not going to go into the this or that. I'm an America first guy. America shouldn't be doing with nothing, with nobody. Like, if I pay taxes on shit, it should be spent in America. Fuck what's going on anywhere else. Ukraine, anywhere else. Fuck that shit. Keep the money here. I wish we could pick that what what log to send in. I had three aborted logs and one good log, and when it synced automatically, it confused the hell out of whoever I got in the ticket. Alex, when we get in the college tuition update video, I finally packaged up the GT3500 motor. It's going to get shipped to L&M Monday or Tuesday. Tooth drop in the middle of the show. Jesus Christ, it would be the end of the world. Imagine if my tooth flew off in the middle of the show. Forget it. I, I Unrecoverable. Like, oh, buckwheat, stupid asshole, you know, and I had, then I had to come clean. Now I came clean because this bitch is in there. If it flies off now, I don't care because I'm like, I paid good fucking money. I'll get that sucker titanium back in there, but it is in there. I, yeah, there's no retainer. There's no, it's all good. I'm happy. I'm fucking happy. Starkey's wife's boyfriend says, for the record, part of the merge contract was Dustin got a term. <laughs> 
Ah, oh, fuck me. But what about the GM DOD problems? I don't care. What about the four ten R eighty problems? What about the four DI problems? Did you not think about the Ford problems? I can respect that. Exactly. Jim Farley is so worried about Tesla to even realize that he's losing badly to the large SUV game. Mike H, you working over 40 hours yet? <laughs> but he has a 15 Denali. The body is rushing through. I live in South Florida. No rust issues here. Imagine an Explore STGT all-wheel drive robust new trans and a Coyote variant for uh, a loss. My tooth, right? Imagine. Imagine if I, if, okay. The retainer is actually, I got to admit. I wasn't aware of the technology that's available in dentistry nowadays. That sucker wasn't there. No, did y'all notice that I had a potential missing tooth? Like when I laughed and I moved around, like it wasn't flopping around. It wasn't weird. I just talked weird. And I told you guys I had a retainer, which I did. I had a retainer. It basically took up the whole roof of my mouth and a fucking tooth as a slide piece matter of fact even the dentist when they would come to see me they're like so what are you here for and then i would take it off they're like holy shit they did a really good job matching it up i'm like apparently they did an insanely good job but this the first time looked a little sucked in the second time looked a little this and the third time was perfect so basically an on three tooth can you not tune the dod out you can tune the dod out but you should take out the mechanical thing that makes it dod because it's going to fail eventually Alex's tooth files. Alex's tooth flies out instantly. Goes from Puerto Rican to Mexican. Still at forty hours. It was a mod for Alex. I might be willing to put in overtime. I wish Ford had enough balls to do something all-wheel drive and lease two-door performance hybrid. Alex, an imaginary world for hood exit setups. How are O2s going to work? Only front ones. Again, in an imaginary world, as long as the O2 is not at the end of the pipe, it doesn't matter where you put the pipe. Alex. F-153 5 pulley header fuel system Caltrax. What would you recommend for more power? Gold to high nines, low tens, daily driven. 3-5 pulley. I mean, right there, right, Ivan? Ivan, isn't it already there? 3-5 pulley. E85 is your next step. You need octane. Octane, octane, octane. They can pulley down. Forget it on pump gas. Forget it. Imagine if Stangmo lost a tooth. My mom got the same thing with her teeth. Got a post put in the jaw, new fake tooth, fell out four times and she had to super glue it back in. If this thing falls out, I will lose my mind. It was big money. Big money if this thing flies out. If this thing flies out, it would blow my mind. <clears throat> yeah, I, would want the I wouldn't want the lipsters in there. You had braces before, you got pretty straight. No, I never had braces. That's why I'm very happy that genetically I have good teeth and I wanted to make sure this guy... And here, got fixed up because I'm not the best looking dude. Calves are on point. Smiles on point. Everything else is questionable. So I got to have something to offer. Do you know what I'm saying? This is Ford has been having a good phasers. This is Ford has been having good phasers on the Coyote. At least I haven't had an issue with mine. Goes with the new design in the Gen 2 Raptor and it's junk. Now they have to get it repaired and it's 5K. Oh my God. My boy lost his front teeth from a... Half inch breaker bar tightening the belt housing bolts. Caltrax. No, he said Caltrax. C A L. Caltrax basically ripped off the fucking name. He rips. The guy has nothing. The guy literally uses Vikings and says they're under his name. And when I see a guy with, a sh with his shirt, I laugh so hard. I'm like, oh my God, you're in for a fucking world of hurt. Just get a box of chiclets. Problem solved. The whole box of teeth. Eh. Implants should be as good as long as the dentist didn't use DeWalt. <laughs> Pretty sure they are screwed in. No, these are screwed in. Guys, they, they it, had a, it had a torque spec. They go in there. The implant goes in. They put the tooth in. It has a slot and it has a bolt. And the bolt is self-torquing. So you feel a tightness in your jaw. And then it goes, click. I'm like, and then I, and then I said, is that thing torqued to, is that thing torqued? They go, yeah. I go, it has a, torque yield they go yeah how'd you know and i'm like i can hear it so it has a mechanism that mechanically locks in place and torques in place and that's it crazy shit um i have naturally straight teeth uh, unfortunately i still look like a foot <laughs> wonder how you would look with a grill fka all day for life sounds painful it was pretty painful i'm not gonna lie the install again they took it out i was i was knocked out i was knocked out took the tooth out put the implant in at the same time and they, they sent me home with a fucking 
temporary in and a bunch of gauze in my shit because they took my wit. This is what they did at the same time. Listen, they took all four of my wisdom teeth out, implant, and gave me a temporary and sent me home like that. And I gave you guys a show three days later. So, and I was in fucking pain and I was on perks and you name it. I was hopped up on every pill and I somehow got to that. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you very much. We hung out today talking about the super snake not being anything super. The super GT. There's no snake, so there can't be a super snake, okay? If there is no man, there cannot be a superman. Imagine someone says superman and go, what's a man? Superman is super because he does better things better than men. So he is a superman. A super snake, you would assume, would be better than a snake that doesn't exist. So it is stupid. It's a super GT and a super gay one at that. Then we talked about S281s. Then we uh, played a bunch of Diddy sound clips and told people why they should never watch this show with a child. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. I'll be back on um, Tuesday, tomorrow, 5 p.m. or 4.30 p.m. The Mustang GT, 2013 Mustang GT. I put 260 GT fuel in it, did draggy hits, and then I tried to shove more timing in and interesting results based on what some some theories I had about the intake design that makes it least likely to be able to shove timing in it. So manifold and exhaust upgrades are on the way. I'm out of here. I'll see you guys on Tuesday for Talking Shit Tuesday. But for tomorrow, make sure you uh, are on and get... At 4.30 or so, you'll be able to see a new video. Patreon members are already seeing it. I uploaded it directly to Patreon members. So if you want to see everything early, become a Patreon member for 15 bucks a month. If not, say hold you up. And then you're going to have to just wait on YouTube to uh, for, for the rest of the people to see it. Again, if you're a member on YouTube, you're not missing out. You're still eligible first for giveaways because you're a member. So don't don't poo-poo the whole you know membership program on YouTube. Have a good rest of your night. I'll see you guys on Tuesday. Bye.